A globally competent world is possible. We asked a few people about their experiences with global competence, and here's what they said. Tell us about an insensitive comment someone's made to you because of your culture or country of origin. Nowhere to start. <laughs> um, I will say I'm black and they'll say, really? The most insensitive uh, comment that someone has made about me being an African uh, is the idea that whatever happens in Africa happens to everyone. So for example, you say my name is so and so, I'm from Africa, and someone says, oh, so do you have AIDS? I'm very sorry about it. But they then started commenting on like uh, a color, like I'm a brown guy, so, uh, and one of, one of the guy, uh, he commented like, uh, do you people have a bomb inside your pocket or uh, under the jacket? Uh, he, he thought that he, he, was, he was being funny and all the stuff, but yeah, that was the thing which I feel offended. Um, I was working, I work for the city government. We are all government workers. We're all a part of the same system, which basically means that we're all citizens of, of this particular um, entity. But I had someone come in to do some work for me and I had to sign off on the work. And when I signed off on the work, with my last name being Mubarak, he questioned me, he started question, questioning me about who I was and where I was from. And when I told him, he asked me where I was from. I told him I was from Danville, Virginia. He asked me a couple of other questions, which I thought were just general curiosities. But then after I gave him the whole spiel, he comes back and says, well, I just wanted to make sure you weren't one of them. I had a group of friends that were all white and we were traveling one day in the car <clears throat> and my friend was driving and someone cut her off and she used the n-word out of anger and um, I don't know if she saw the race of the individual who was driving or if she just used it plainly out of anger and then she just looked over at me and just said oh sorry about that. When I was walking around with all the other Jewish people who are all white um, people looked at me a certain way because I'm a black Jew um, and it wasn't necessarily that they said something insensitive to me about my culture or my it wasn't necessarily about my culture but my identity um, as being a black Jew it was just more of the feeling that I got, the looks that I got. And finally he asked, so your friend, um, she's not American is she because then she's then she'll be absolutely hideous to me and we both uh, like as with many times when people say really rude things that have to do with like your your values or like your identity the first response was to laugh because we assumed that he was joking my father's Lebanese and my mother is Mexican so I don't identify with one or the other but some people have not believed that I'm Mexican or that I'm Lebanese and they um, they just presume that oh you're Muslim and we don't believe that you're Mexican because they see that I look Arab or that they know that I'm Lebanese. I will tell my name there will be somebody new I meet I say my name and I will kind of you know make it Usha and my name is so simple so easy but you know, they will look at my face and just presume, oh, I'm not going to learn that name because it's different. And, and uh, so they will find it very easy just to address me like that Indian lady. Whenever they're talking to somebody, they say, that Indian lady. It's been several different comments, um, all relating to me being from India. Um, one of my friends who is American Indian um, called herself a real Indian one day, and I was really offended because, you know, what am I supposed to call myself? Like, you know, if I say that I'm an American Indian, people assume that I'm Native American. And so um, these comments um, always make me feel uncomfortable and uh, make me feel like there's no way for me to represent myself as someone from India. She thought that I should not tell the stories of things that happened to African-American people historically um, 
in, as if that were going to solve the problem of, of the current racism in America and, the, and somehow erase some of the things that my students, um, college age students, are experiencing. When I was talking to a friend about it, he kind of pulled the race card on me. One time when I was in college, it was my freshman year of college, and my friend's dad took us out to dinner. And he was a very, like, sort of businessy California guy. And we were eating restaurant food. And I said, oh, I don't really, at the time I didn't like spicy food, but now I do. But he said something that, you know, years past, I always wonder why I didn't react to it. He said, oh, yids usually don't like spicy food. And I never, I've only heard of the word Yid from, you know, my parents talking about how it's a Jewish slur, but I've never actually heard someone say it. So to hear someone say it brought to my attention that there still is this, not insensitive, and incompetence towards, you know, certain like Jewish characteristics. Tell us how this culturally insensitive experience affected you. I wanted to celebrate the fact that I was from this culture and that I had a lot to offer to the world. But instead, I was put in a category where I had to explain events that were completely separate from who I am as a person. Uh, I didn't like it uh, because maybe uh, it's because of uh, he, he was judging us on the basis of like skin color. I wish I had you know, asked him some questions instead of just answering the questions that he had for me, but you know, I thought that was um, very disrespectful and the implication at that time, which was right after 9-11, there was just some sense that, you know, you're, you're one of them, you're not one of us, and so I had to make sure. My religion was certain, was in a way being demoted or being seen as archaic or lesser than someone else's religion. Well, I was really frustrated. I felt really upset that he said that to me. Um, and I, our friendship was never the same after that. So I don't know it's disrespect or just, um, again, I'm saying ignorance or not trying or not, you know, so uh, I don't know whatever it is, but it to me, it doesn't feel very good. Made me feel as though she didn't value me as a person. How can people who don't know about your culture or country learn about it in a respectful way? I think the best way is just to sincerely have a question. I think sometimes people are afraid to ask when they don't know. Um, but people who have differences understand that people have curiosities about those differences. And I think that if you're sincere and you ask a sincere question, then you will get the answers that you need and you can start to bridge some of those gaps. I think the best way someone can learn about my country in a respectful way is by approaching it from a perspective of uncertainty. So asking open questions, tell me about your country, tell me about yourself, what is something you want to share about your background. I think taking out any assumptions from a question really helps open up the conversation and helps people be able to talk about where they are from. Not to look at me and label me. By actually asking real questions. Recognize that asking as if I need to justify who I am may not be the, the best approach. Engage with us. I think that there has to be a, a level of openness and I think one of the things that's important is for people to understand that they don't know everything. Everybody should first, you know, interact with the person. No one can ever know everything and you don't know what you don't know. And so I really respect people who ask me questions. By asking me um, if it's somebody that knows me and is interested and curious about where I'm from, um, honestly, the best approach is just to ask me directly. Not like a magical creature who they have to be super sensitive around or who has mystical knowledge of the world that they can impart to them. Ask questions out of curiosity. Don't ask questions to mine for something that isn't there. And just think to yourself, if someone was asking me this question about my own culture, using the same tone of voice, with the same inflections, with the same mannerisms, would I be offended? By being very honest about what they want to know and what they don't know. Learning is good. I think talking to me 
um, figuring out who I am, what my history is, where I've been, the experiences that I've lived um, would help people understand my culture more than just looking at me and judging. How would you describe a globally competent person? A globally competent person is someone who tries to understand how things are connected. Someone who embraces our culture and our practices and actually encourages it. Someone who knows how to interact with people of different cultures. They may not need to know everything about every different culture because that's pretty much impossible. I'm open to listening. It would be someone who is curious, not interested in exoticism, interested in no interested while being also aware that every culture does have similar characteristics but you know different practices and everyone does something different but also people do things the same um, it's about a commitment to equality a commitment to justice um, because only then can you truly see somebody as your equal being a human if you interact with the person as a human being one that reads stories about other countries other cultures and one that reads the news. I do have an openness to um, other cultures. A person who is willing to listen, who is willing to take a step back. A globally competent person is, you know, always ready to learn. Someone who realizes that no one culture has superiority over another. Someone who realizes that they do not know all things about all cultures. Being skeptical about the messages that they're fed um, that don't come from, from you know, other global citizens but that come from institutions. Has to be someone who approaches things with a little bit of uncertainty. You can't say that you really understand a situation because things are constantly in a state of flux. So you have to make the effort to try and understand things as they are now, but also keep in mind that things will always be changing in any given culture and setting so and trying to make sure that you understand the connectivity of that. Tell us about your experience of cultural insensitivity or discrimination by an institution. When I went to the DMV and there was a couple of individuals in front of me who were um, at the front desk receiving services and the lady at the desk was very nice, sweet to them, but when it was my turn, uh, I was treated differently. She didn't really make eye contact with me and she seemed uh, not interested as she did with the others. And so I felt a little offended. Um, I'm not sure if it was my skin color or not. Post 9-11, every time that I've flown somewhere, I am almost always randomly screened for an extra pat down. My awareness of that started from when I was very small. I think having two parents who are not white, uh, growing up in that environment, I was always aware that we were going to be treated differently. On the school side, I would miss school during Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, which is the High Holy Days. And during those times I had to miss school, those are days of prayer, those are very important days to Jewish people. But I would have teachers roll their eyes or say I was lying when I gave them the note from my rabbi saying I had to miss school. I got pulled aside by an officer in the airport and they asked me where I was from and I said I'm American and they didn't believe me so they asked for my passport and I think that's a little unfair, especially coming from an airport officer. When the school was actually 85% white, why it was so important to make sure that we include people of color in the pictures. And so some might say, well, it's really important to show that you have diversity, but there was a lack of diversity. And so you're portraying an ideal that as someone of color, you'll be able to come to this school and that you will be surrounded by other people who look like you, who have some of the same life experiences, who have the same cultural experiences. But then when you get there, you're overwhelmed by the fact that it's not. And I myself experienced that. And I had a couple of other friends of color who told me that they experienced the same thing of looking through the brochures and feeling like, oh, I see people who look like me. 
and then arriving on campus and realizing that they see very few people who look like them. And so there was this uh, social event that was being organized and part of it involved uh, going to the beach uh, to have fun, to encourage teamwork, participation and just to let loose. I knew that this was being planned but I actually never got uh, the invite. So in my mind I thought oh it had been cancelled and it was over the weekend and so you come back to work on Monday you hear everyone buzzing about how it was so much fun to be in your bikinis, to be playing beach volleyball. You're like, okay, I did not get the invite. And someone innocently said, oh, yes, yes, yes. You know what? Yeah, we discussed it, but we thought just because you're from a different culture, you may not appreciate, you know, th those kind of sports and wearing bikinis and being naked in front of uh, men. So we decided to be respectful of your culture and ex and just excuse you from the from the event. I hope that's okay with you, right? Because in your culture, it is not good um, to be naked in front of men. She told me, no, you cannot go to school. You are, you are not supposed to get admission. No, why? Give me the reason why. And she has no reason whatsoever. Now it's kind of normal for me, but it's still, you know, it's still something that um, is uncomfortable. And I know it's just people, um, I am screened just because of the way I look and dress. So that was really amazing you know, how one person can be such a hindrance in somebody who really want to, you know, have this, uh, um, you know, uh, kind of what's called, uh, um, uh, you know, purpose in life to, you know, have more education. I felt exploited. I myself, though I wasn't in the particular picture that I talked to you about, I was part of a commercial for our school that was used um, on the local channels and even some of the national networks. And even now we're using billboards and I see that our billboards they made sure again to include people of color and of different races and even people with different piercings and hair colors and it just it's it's a sad feeling to know that there are people just like myself who walked onto that campus and were instantly lonely so that put a lot of like distrust in me and my teachers like my teachers don't if my teachers can't trust my culture how can I trust them to competently teach me this subject or, you know, respect me as a person? How would you describe a globally competent institution? I think a globally competent institution is one that is open to uh, learning, diversity. I think it, it comes down to being very aware of how the people in their institution are being treated, um, and are being recognized, but then also the work that and their impact on the greater community. It should be very similar to a globally competent person. I think that institutions um, have even more trouble than individuals at looking like they don't know something. Um, and that I think the practices should show a humility about the fact that, that the system was built uh, likely for uh, a very small group of people. Um, and if we're talking about things like immigration or a health system, um, you know, often built before, you know, immigration started happening or, or built um, inflexibly. So uh, I guess a humility and a flexibility about uh, the fact that, it, they, that an institution isn't always built for the people. Uh, which should not discriminate on the basis of color, religion, race, uh, ethnicity. It would not project what they believe um, onto communities, that they would really try to find out what communities need and work around that to meet those needs. That an institution would make it its business um, to make sure that everyone is inclusive, there, that there isn't some um, leaning toward the dominant culture's way of doing whatever it is that they do. I would describe it as um, a place that really fosters um, openness and um, sort of encourages people to embrace cultural differences. I think they have a responsibility to just see the talent of a person. 
not you know where the person come from or what what person look like or how a person speaks you see if that person is really qualified and can do the job it's important that you really understand the people that you are working with and working for and that you take the time to learn more about them in a respectful way aware of the work that they're doing in the world and what they stand for and how they may be perpetuating injustices in the world. A globally competent institution is one that would um, really be aware of all of its constituents. A globally competent institution would be one that can actually walk the talk. I think what would really work is for an institution to understand that there are differences between people, but those differences can create and amazing new ideas to come to an institution. It's really important that as agencies we spend time in the communities with the people that we want to work with because we have to build trust but you don't want to do it just to manipulate them. You don't want to do it just so you can meet an ends to your means. You really want to do it because you care about the cultures that you work with and I think it's really important that institutions take the time to really develop their own vision for themselves in the communities that they work with and work for and in their entire global society to take the time to think about who they are and what they want to be and where they see themselves and to go out and do those things in a mindful way. I'd like to shift the conversation away from focusing on can you interact with people from all over the world but can you interact with people in a way that is liberatory and forwarding justice? Describe a world in which people and institutions act as globally competent citizens. This world would be really awesome. Would be very peaceful. <laughs> a globally competent world would be absolutely amazing. It would be a great world and I think what would be great about it is that there wouldn't be so much judgment when you do things that differentiate from the quote-unquote norm. A world that was rich and vast in culture and exploration. We would have um, lessons in classrooms that talked about the world and talked about history from various perspectives. One where people are brave enough to be curious about each other. It would just be so much nicer and so much less frustrating and, and you know, ulcer inducing for the people that have to live in it. The world would be more, you know, happy and would, would be more comfortable place. A globally competent set of people and institutions would see the world as a place that is for people. Your place of origin is not the default indicator of your capacity, your identity, your knowledge, uh, your knowledge levels, and or your ability uh, to function in a different world. People should be more curious but not intrusive in a way of judgment and you know, kind of assuming the worst. I think that people should just learn to embrace other cultures and ask questions definitely, but don't assume. Just be knowledgeable and read and know where places are on the map. People could just be themselves without having to worry about um, people making judgments about them. I think if all people really took the time to be self-aware and to explore the things that they don't know, we could have such a rich culture, a rich mingling of cultures, a rich understanding of each other. And there's so much to gain from engaging with people who have different life experiences, and different cultural experiences. There's so much that you can learn. This will eliminate many stereotypes, create resources for cultures, ethnicity, all different kinds of races. Just don't admire the garden, please. If you pay attention to the gardener, who made that garden so good looking for you to come in and enjoy and, and admire, you need to know the garden. A globally competent world would not have the majority of resources in the hands of very few people who all kind of look alike. We need to be aware that everyone's different and we need to be aware that in this world 
those differences create something new and vibrant and wonderful. The world would be more sensitive to people from everywhere and concerns that are even not within our community are still a concern. People would be willing to go to um, things, events, um, institutions, churches, cultural events outside of their own um, their own historical culture so that they would understand more about um, other cultures. There is a term that was I've heard being tossed around and that term is I am colorblind. In my opinion there's no such thing as being colorblind because it is our differences that bring us together and make us be able to discover new things in the world and we need to be brave enough to be curious about each other to ask each other questions so we can learn from each other and we can enhance our societies first and foremost every individual is treated equally and i think it would just be a beautiful experience to see people advocating for each other and not just for your own culture and your own race but to advocate for each other to stand together everybody would respect everyone else's belief systems they would respect um, other people's ways of doing things and that we would look for some kind of commonality between when it was time to do things together. And I think a lot of times what happens is those differences get in the way. But I think that if you're a globally competent world, then what you're doing is you're looking at everybody's individual um, gifts, everybody's individual contributions, and then you find that common thread when it's time to get together or when it's time to bridge gaps. You look for those common threads and you operate from there and not get caught up on the differences between us. Most of us have had experiences where someone made assumptions about us or made an insensitive comment based on how we look, where we're from, or based on some other perceived difference. Most of us make assumptions about people on a regular basis. It's not that we mean to cause them harm, but what we do and what we say can hurt them. However, a world in which people are self-aware and treat each other with respect is possible. To achieve it, we have to recognize the messages that we've internalized that cause us to distrust or even hate each other. We have to use our understanding to actively end discrimination. We have to practice radical self-awareness, humility, and acceptance of others. We have to understand how these internalized messages contribute to conflicts between people and on a national and even global level. We're all interconnected and mutually responsible to each other, regardless of our culture or country of origin. Our differences shouldn't be ignored or cause fear. They should be used to create deeper understanding and connection. We need to cultivate greater awareness about ourselves in relation to others and to deepen our understanding and respect for people from different countries and cultures. We must commit to apply our knowledge and to act in ways that are ethical and that foster mutual empowerment and to fight injustice and intolerance whenever we encounter it. We need to work together to dismantle institutionalized discrimination and to challenge the power structures that perpetuate oppression. Our health and our lives and the future of our world depend on it. It is within our reach to create a globally competent world in which people are dedicated to thinking and acting as global citizens. Find out more about global competence and how you can be part of this social change movement at globalcitizenllc.com.